So, you're thinking about getting into FPV, but, like me, you have little to no knowledge of electronic components, you've never really soldered before, you don't have much time to learn, and maybe even have little to no interest in learning how. Some serious enthusiasts might say, well, this isn't the hobby for you. However, I disagree. I think, no matter what your reasoning is for getting into the hobby, there is a simple way to get started without much prior knowledge up front. And that's what I want to share with you guys today. When I first got hooked, I went down a rabbit hole of research. G'day, Stu from UAV Futures here, and today, well, what's up, guys? Welcome to Rotor Riot. My name's Alex. Hey, I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. However, the more I learned, the more questions I had, and the more I realized that this wasn't gonna be as easy as I originally thought. Because the truth is, for somebody who really wants to get invested in the hobby, there is so much to learn if you're only willing to invest the time. Personally, I just wanted a quality product that I could take straight out of the box and fly. And I think, whether you're a casual hobbyist with a full-time job and not a lot of time, a filmmaker looking to use FPV as a tool for your videos, or just somebody looking to buy an FPV drone as a fun gift for somebody else, there's a lot of you in the same boat. So, is it possible to get into FPV without a lot of effort and technical knowledge? Yes. So how do you do it? Well, I think no matter who you ask, an almost universal response will be that step one is downloading a simulator. Why simulators? Well, flying FPV drones is very difficult. Even if you're coming from a cinematography background and you're used to flying photography drones, there's going to be a steep learning curve. See, unlike other drones, FPV quads don't stop to avoid obstacles, they don't maintain their elevation, and you can also tilt and turn them in any direction, meaning you can completely flip them upside down. Because of that, it's unavoidable that when you're first starting out, you will crash. A lot. Even if you are an avid gamer and comfortable with a controller, the controls are not going to be very intuitive for you. By getting a simulator, you can learn to fly without the headache of breaking your drone. If you crash in the sim, you instantly restart. If you crash in real life, well, your quad might be out of commission for a while. Also, if you get frustrated and decide to quit, you can leave with the satisfaction knowing that you only invested $20 on the hobby and move on to something else. So, which simulator should you buy? The most popular simulators on the market are Velocidrone and Liftoff. Out of the two, Liftoff requires a higher end computer to run, but both of them will give you a pretty good FPV experience. I don't want to get into the minor differences between the two, but which one you choose is ultimately up to personal preference. Now, a lot of people say that when you buy a simulator, you shouldn't use a gaming controller, but instead you should invest in a real RC radio. Personally, I'd say use what you have. The RC radio will give you a better experience, and you will need one eventually, but I'd say don't buy one until you know that you want to commit to the hobby. Also, you might end up buying a drone and a radio bundled together, so until you know what you want to buy, just wait. Now, a couple days have passed, you're starting to fly well in the simulator, you like it, and now you really want to get started for real. So what main equipment are you going to need to get started in FPV? The main components of your FPV setup are going to be a drone, a radio transmitter, FPV goggles, a battery charger, and batteries. Now, you will need multiple batteries. A typical drone battery lasts between two to seven minutes, depending on size, and there's no real way around that. Drones use a lot of power, and you're not gonna wanna wait for your one battery to charge every time after three minutes of flying. So I do recommend you buy multiples of these. And I will uh, link the ones I recommend below. Now, you know what equipment you need, but which model should you buy? How much money should you spend on each item? How do you make sure that everything is compatible? And how do you make everything work? All of these are valid questions because not all the components available are gonna be compatible with each other. However, there is a simple solution to this. Luckily, there are a few solid options of ready to fly kits that will make this choice a lot easier to make. These are great quality drones that come ready to go straight out of the box. 
The drones come pre-assembled, and they also come bundled with a radio. The radio receiver, which you would normally have to buy separately and solder into your drone yourself, also comes pre-installed. Not bad. Now, depending on your budget, your interest level, and your needs, I've selected two ready-to-fly kits and a third slightly different option that you can choose from. So here's step two, choosing your drone. The first drone on my list is the Emax Tiny Hawk. Now this one here is the Tiny Hawk S with my own custom paint job, but it looks pretty similar to the original. Now, although these are a lot smaller than a full-sized FPV drone, they shouldn't be considered or disregarded as a toy. In fact, they have a lot of power and they come surprisingly close to handling the same way a full-sized drone would. With the goggles on, the experience is pretty similar. Also, their size actually makes them better in a few ways than a standard sized drone. First of all, because they're so small and light, you can crash them and beat them around quite a bit and still feel confident that you won't need too many repairs when you're first starting out. You can also easily fly them indoors and through tiny gaps that you could never fly a full sized drone through. It makes you start looking at objects in your house as potential gates or obstacles and setting up racetracks around the house is pretty fun. The propellers on the Tiny Hawk are also surrounded by bumpers which not only sometimes let you bounce off of objects, but also protect both the propellers and the object that you hit from getting scratched or damaged. Although many people would prefer to take their drones outside, if you live in a place with a lot of bad weather, this could be a great option for you. Also, if you live in a country with very strict drone laws like Canada has, this could also be a great option. Don't quote me on these numbers, but currently flying a drone outside without a proper license in Canada could get you up to $5,000 in fines. This could go up to 7,000 if you're flying in unapproved spaces. If this is something you have to deal with, well, this might be a way around that. The greatest benefit of buying this package though is that altogether it costs $165.99 and besides a few extra batteries, it comes with everything you need. You will get the drone, a controller, FPV goggles, a battery, and the battery charger. Honestly, as a casual user, you might not even feel the need to ever upgrade. If you're on a budget, this is definitely the place to start. And if you decide that it's a hobby that you actually really enjoy, you can slowly start upgrading your equipment piece by piece. If you decide to upgrade your radio transmitter or want to buy a new set of goggles, if you do a little bit of research, they will most likely pair with the Tiny Hawk and you can enjoy them together while you save up some money to buy the rest of your gear. Now, what this drone isn't made for is freestyle and cinematics. Although you can have a great time racing these with your friends, it doesn't really have the components necessary to do the complicated maneuvers that a professional freestyle rig would have. Also, even though it's been done before, it would be incredibly impractical and difficult to mount an action cam to this. So if you're planning on using your FPV drone to do some filmmaking, you're probably gonna need something bigger. So this is option two. Now, I'm gonna jump first from the cheapest to my most expensive recommendation because I wanna talk first about the TBS Oblivion. Now, the Oblivion has the size and the power of a full-sized racing drone, is incredibly easy to pick up and use, and also takes away all the skills necessary to fix a drone yourself. Just like the Tiny Hawk, the Oblivion can be bought in a ready-to-fly kit that you can instantly take out of the box and use. What makes this drone great though, is it's the only full-size drone that comes with a modular design where any piece can be taken out and swapped with a replacement without ever having to solder anything. That's why I'd say if you're coming into the hobby from the filmmaking world, or simply have more money and less time, this is the option for you. It will give you the best performance while requiring the least amount of technical knowledge. It even comes with a GoPro mount, so you really don't have to worry about anything. It's as close to a no fuss option as it gets. The first downside of this quad is that you would be mostly limiting yourself to TBS parts. Their modular design is unique and made solely for their own products. But hey, they work pretty well. The only time I would ever see this being a problem for the average person is if a product wasn't in stock, you wouldn't really have any alternatives. 
Like I said, this is also the most expensive option of the three. For the drone, controller, battery, and charger, it costs $600, and this kit does not include a pair of goggles. Luckily, any pair of analog goggles will most likely work with this drone, however, it is an extra cost on top of an already expensive product. The footage that I've seen people get with this though, Yeah, it's, it's great. Now, there are a few full-sized budget-friendly quads that come in complete kits similar to the Oblivion. However, a lot of the most popular options come set up as what is called bind and fly. Bind and fly drones come completely assembled, but it's up to you to buy your own goggles, charger, radio, and a receiver that works with your radio, and then pair them together. The inconvenient part of this route is that not all the equipment on the market today is compatible with each other. So it does take a little bit more research to make sure that the things you buy are going to work together. Also, if you take this route, you have to be completely committed to troubleshooting, learning about the hobby, fixing your drone, and learning the ins and outs of the hardware and software that make up your drone. Even though these drones are still really easy to set up, it's inevitable that eventually you will crash. Some people would even say that if you're not crashing, you're not really pushing yourself, and therefore not really learning. The difference between the Oblivion and the average bind and fly drone, however, is that if something breaks, you're most likely gonna have to solder on the replacement part yourself. This is why I'd only recommend this option to the serious hobbyist, because if you take this route, you're definitely committing to the long term of learning about the hobby. So, if you're ready for that, this is the gear I'd recommend. The drone I personally use is the Nozzle 5 4S. Overall, this is a great quality drone that I would recommend to any beginner. The build quality is fantastic, and it flies incredibly well. I have nothing against the 6S version of this, which is a little bit more powerful, and I've heard great reviews uh, on that one as well. However, this is the one I own and the one I feel a little bit more comfortable talking about. I'm not going to go into the details of the Nazgul 4 or the Nazgul 5. Um, if you want my full review, I'm going to link it above. You will also need a radio transmitter. The one I use is the Tyrannus QX7, which is an affordable yet pro-level transmitter that you will probably never need to upgrade. Now, although this isn't the highest end model in the Tyrannus line, Tyrannus radios are generally known to be the bread and butter of RC controllers. And this one has all the features you need as a beginner and probably well into the future. It's also easy to find receivers that are compatible with this radio and will let you use almost any drone or RC vehicle you want to use in the future. The Nazgul 5 comes with the option of having an RXSR or XM Plus receiver pre-installed both which will work with the Tyrannus QX7. Oh, um, one quick disclaimer, uh, for some reason this radio doesn't come with a charger included. So if you do decide to go with this radio, make sure to buy the charger separately. Uh, again, I'll link it down below. All right, next. The one thing that makes FPV what it is are the goggles. Now, the ones I chose to get are the Eashin EV800Ds. And at $86, these are probably as cheap as you can go without sacrificing too much quality. Now, the box goggles are definitely much bigger and bulkier than dual screen goggles, like the popular Fat Shark HDOs or now the H HDO2s. Um, however, the great thing about these is, first of all, the screen is great, uh, the field of view is great on these, and if you ever choose to upgrade, the screen actually pops out of these and can be used as an external monitor for your friends and family if they ever wanna watch along as you fly. Other solid options for goggles are the Fat Shark Attitude V5s and the Fat Shark HDO2s. There's also the DJI Digital FPV system, which is the only set of digital goggles and will give you an image in full HD. Which ones you choose are probably gonna be up to your budget. Now, the DJI system is also going to require a little bit more research and tinkering on your part, so make sure you're comfortable with the installation of those if you decide to go for them. 
Next, something that a lot of beginners don't realize is you're also going to have to invest in a charger. Now, there are some cheap options available, however, charging LiPo batteries can be pretty dangerous and there is a better and worse way of doing it. So investing in something a little bit better can save you money in the long run, possibly prevent you from burning your house down, and will also make charging a lot faster and more enjoyable. The charger I use is the Hobbymate D6 Duo which is a little bit pricey, and if you're on a budget, I will include some cheaper options down below. However, what I like about this one is it doesn't require an external power supply, but simply plugs into the wall. And surprisingly, a lot of chargers do require you to buy a power supply separately. And I don't know, I just, I kind of just prefer everything to be integrated and simple. So I, I, I really like this one. Also, remember that no matter which option of FPV drone you decide to buy, you will need extra batteries. The Tiny Hawk runs off of one cell or one S batteries, and the Nazgul 5 and the Oblivion both run off of four cell or four S batteries. That is, unless you buy the 6S version of the Nazgul, in which case it'll run off of 6S batteries. There are also a lot of tools and accessories that are useful and sometimes necessary to have when starting out in FPV. However, that's going to be a whole other video. For now, the options above should be a good starting point. And that's it. So no matter what your needs and budget are, there is an easy way to get into FPV, and I hope this video made your first purchase at least a little bit easier. Honestly, flying FPV drones can be an incredibly fun and rewarding hobby. However, sometimes I just think it can be a little bit overwhelming. Also, if I was to add a step three to this list, it would be to keep learning as much as you can. This video is going to be the first in a series of beginner FPV videos that I'm working on. So if you enjoyed this content, please make sure to like and subscribe and I'll have more videos for you guys soon. I really do appreciate all of you guys watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.